Well, good morning. You know, when I got here, everybody was pushed to the sides. And there was a big bald spot right in here in the middle. And uh, it's like the whole church took Rogaine. <laughs> but the sides are, what's going on? I don't know. So <laughs> good to have you all here. Um, if you're visiting with us, if it's your first time here, man, we're so glad that you're here. If you're here physically, there's a, there's a card right there uh, that you can fill out. <laughs> Some of y'all are like, what do you mean I'm, am I here physically? I'm not here mentally, maybe. But, <laughs> but if you're here sitting in a pew, you can fill out a card and put in the box marked offering in the, in the foyer out there. Uh, but if you're watching online, or if you just want to do this this way, uh, you can text 636-399, no, don't do that, 636-742-1011, 636-742-1011, somebody say it with me, 636-742-1011, alright, you text it, and uh, we're going to get you a digital guest card, and so if you want more information about the church, you want to set up a meeting with the pastor, you're wondering about next steps uh, with, with this whole thing, or you're wondering about, uh, you want us to pray for any way that you want us to pray for, that's a good way to get started. But if you're just watching for the first time, or you're just here, I just want you to text it anyhow, if you've never done it. 636-742-1011, good to do that, or fill a card uh, in your pew there. Got a couple uh, announcements for you. I'm going to try to go quick, but I want to do them all justice, okay? So let's let's lean in, and we'll try to get through them together, okay? And your bullets in there. I just wanted to make note uh, that we have surpassed our Annie Armstrong Easter offering. Praise God. Isn't that good? All right. Thank you all for, for giving to that, and uh, that that's wonderful. Wanted to thank you on behalf of Sarah and I. Thank you for our showers yesterday. Uh, we hadn't taken a shower in so long. <laughs> uh, I just full of them today. Uh, but uh, wanted to thank you for that. We, I think that we have diapers enough for a while now. So uh, that was real nice. Uh, y'all that planned it and y'all that did it, y'all that came out. And uh, some of y'all that couldn't come but you uh, brought a gift and stuff. Thank you guys for all of that. Uh, we mounted it up in the living room and the cat didn't know what to do about that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And so I wanted to kind of make that his domain, but Sarah, you know, we had the kids bring, all right, bring us two bags at a time and let's start to, to work through it. So I'm not going to claim that it's all done, but we're almost there. So uh, after church today, somebody say BBS, BBS, yeah. Vacation Bible School, yeah, because uh, listen, y'all, we're going to have BBS this year, and some folks were saying, how can I get involved in Vacation Bible School? Some folks were saying that this week. Message in the pastor, how do I get involved in Vacation Bible School? I said, listen, you all need to come to VBS meeting, okay? So just hang out a little bit after church, downstairs in the fellowship hall, and we're going to get it all organized. Julie's doing a great job with all that. We're going to have Vacation Bible School. It's going to be crazy. You need to bring your kids. Uh, we're going we're gonna to be sending out more information. There's a, there's a Facebook event, y'all. There's a Facebook event. I need you to share it on Facebook. I need you to share that, invite some folks, bring their young kids to Vacation Bible School. That's what we need to do. All right, a couple other things. we got business meeting this Wednesday. Um, our association's having their meeting at Charette Baptist. I get to preach. That's on Thursday. Uh, the youth are in Branson this upcoming weekend. Sarah and I are going with them. You're going to hear from a pastor named Josh Ross. Uh, and next week, he's going to tell a killer story. He's a great guy. Him and his wife are so sweet. And so you're going to want to be here next week to, to hear that. Uh, women's breakfast. Can you believe it? Women's breakfast. There is a sign-up sheet. Men are not the only people at Grace Summit having breakfast. All right? So there is a women's breakfast sign-up sheet in the foyer. I just looked at it. I just set eyes on it. There were names on it. You go sign up. That's going to be at 8 o'clock at Junie Moon Cafe in Union. That's going to be on May 1st. So you're going to want to sign up for that. Uh, we were going to get that started last year, but then right as soon as, all right, it's March 15th, we're going to do uh, women's breakfast, and then everything, the whole world crumbled, and you know what happened. So uh, we're, we're starting that up. Let's see what else we got. Y'all, listen. All right. 
This is it, and I'll be done. Sunday school. All right, we, we believe in Sunday school. Sunday school is starting up. We're getting, we're almost kind of sort of back to normal if we ever were there to begin with. Uh, here's the deal. I'm not going to read this thing in the bulletin. It's in the bulletin. We wrote up a, a piece for that. I'm not going to read it to you, but I'm just going to give you the gist of it. Bob and I have been putting our heads together, okay, right, about Sunday school. And we need, we're prayerfully searching for a K through second Sunday school leader, okay? Somebody who's going to commit to that, maybe somebody in a, in a partner that's going to commit to that. And uh, we got a room for you. We have material for you. We can train you. We can launch as long, you know, you, you, not as long, but um, like everyone who works with kids, you got to, you got to, we're going to do the background check thing. Everyone that works with kids is doing that here, um, and, but we can train you and do that and, and install you in there. Um, in addition, we're looking for several volunteers that would like to form a rotation for nursery. For, we're, we're having kind of a baby boom around here, okay, and that's great. But we need, we're, we need some folks that are going to come together to do nursery for s the Sunday school hour. Uh, back in the day, I'm just saying, back in the day, it was kind of one lady that was just in that room forever and never got to go to Sunday school ever because that was, that was her deal was to take the kids during Sunday school. We're talking bed babies. And so, yeah, you could sing hymns to them and do all those things. But, you know, you're doing that. So we want to form a rotation. Uh, I, I would like to see eight folks background checked and signed up for that to cycle through so that everybody can go to Sunday school, all that. That's what we're praying for. Uh, number three need, number three need. Uh, we need another nursery worker for church time. Uh, we have a pretty good nursery lineup, but we got one nursery worker who works alone. We partner them up. We got one nursery worker right now that's just, she's just by herself. And, and we don't want to do that uh, to her. And so... Uh, we need somebody for nursery. So, uh, say it with me. K through second grade Sunday school teacher. K through second grade Sunday school teacher. That was pretty good. Okay, right? Uh, nursery rotation. Okay, nursery worker. All right, that's what I'm, here's what I'm asking. Here's what I'm, I'm asking you to pray. And just pray that maybe that's something that you can do. If we get enough nursery workers for Sunday school, maybe you can only do that once a month, once every two months. And, and, and count on those other people to fill in the gap, and then um, we can all go to Sunday school, right? And we can get our young folks that are having children and have a lot of kids, bed babies, we can get them into Sunday school too, right? Isn't that kind of important? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray, and, and if you're interested in that, it gives you the information to do that. You can reach out to me uh, and reach out to the office about that. We can set that up. I'm going to pray, and Barb is going to lead us in a prelude. Here's the time where we can just stir our uh, our hearts and still our hearts before God and get ready for the worship service, okay? Is that all right? Judah, you good with that? Let's pray together, okay? Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for how faithful that you are and that your faithfulness is new every morning. And Lord, though trials come in the night, Lord, you prove yourself, your name so great every day. And Lord, there's a reason to wake up because you're there. And there's a reason to get up and, and have church because you're risen. And Father, we just want to pray at this time that you would just help us to lean in to worship today. Help us, Lord, to sing songs jubil jubilantly to the Lord because you're worthy. Because there's one audience here today. This isn't a stage and, a, and an audience. Lord, we're all singing songs to you. And Father, as we hear your word, we pray, Lord, that you would open eyes to understand it, open ears to to hear it, uh, empower hands and feet to walk in obedience to it, Lord. And, and Father, would you begin that work in me as well? Lord, that I, after preaching these things, would not disqualify myself by not living up to what I'm saying. And Lord, would you help us all to pursue the cross of Christ together? And Lord, pray for those that are watching online and bless them as well. Help them to understand these things and help them to hear clearly what we're saying as well. We pray, Lord, that you would be glorified in all things. In Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Let's hear the prelude together.
Amen. Let's stand together and sing to the Lord today. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing, but not. failures I tried to hide. It was my tomb till I met you. All right. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of Now your mercy has saved my soul. Now your freedom is all that I know. Right. The old man knew Jesus when I met you. Oh, you called my name. Out of the darkness into your glorious day, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day, I needed rest. My sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. Cause when you call my name, sing him 20. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Anybody know that song? All right. Let's sing it together. Great and mighty is the Lord our Praises to 
about you, but uh, today I need to hear that the Lord's faithfulness is new every morning. And that he didn't change from yesterday to today. He didn't become less faithful. And so, would you sing with us hymn 96, Great is Thy Faithfulness. I invite you to sing hymn 448, Before the Throne of God Above. And as you do that, whether you're reading a hymn or reading a screen, um, I, just, I just invite you to listen to these words, listen to the gospel content here, and just sing it out in your heart, because I think that there's a powerful message here in this song.
turn to our tithes and offerings, I'm going to invite Brother Mike to come and to pray for us as we think about our offering and many options for giving. If you're visiting with us for the first time, we just ask that you be our guest today. If you're watching for the first time, likewise, we'd just be glad for you to just join us in worship. But uh, if you're partnered with us in membership, you're just partnered with us in heart uh, to give to the Lord that we might uh, be a lighthouse here in Grace Summit and the places beyond that. Uh, we just ask that you, and, and thank you for your thankfulness, for your faithfulness in giving. And we ask Mike to come and pray over that, uh, as we feel it is a part of our worship as well. So. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your many blessings, Lord. And Father, we are so thankful for each and every prayer that you have given this prayer, Lord. And Father, we give yourself to you just as we go through this. And, and uh, uh, we're just forever thankful, Lord. And Father, we just ask that you just uh, offer this for your glory. And, uh, Go ahead and take a seat, and children are dismissed to Children's Church. That was our drum line there for a second. Huh. Hey, listen. Uh, I think we ought to be a church with rowdy children. You know what I'm saying? Because I would sure hate the alternative. You know what I mean? Y'all y'all know what I'm saying? All right. All right. How y'all doing today? Y'all doing okay? All right. Listen, my daughter, uh, who just left, and when she leaves, I can talk about her. Um, she, for a while there, was in this big My Little Pony Phase. Y'all know about My Little Pony, and it's kind of was older, but then it kind of had a revival there, uh, the newer cartoon and stuff. Well, since then, she's kind of left My Little Pony, and uh, she's moved to SpongeBob SquarePants. And I'm not sure which one is more annoying, you know what I'm saying, to have blasting on the TV uh, while we're trying to just live, exist, right? Uh, so she's dropped My Little Pony now for SpongeBob, and I, I think that that's way worse. Um, but we were at the mall back when you can do things like that, and we were walking around, and, and Chloe had caught in the corner of her eye what she thought was My Little Pony, a My Little Pony toy there at the kiosk there at the mall. And so she ran over there, and of course, uh, being the parents, we got to run over there now too. Well, upon closer inspection, it was not My Little Pony at all. It was like 
Hi, little Pawnee. Or so, it, was, it was a cheap knockoff, right? It was a cheap ripoff. And they were trying to cash in on the My Little Pony name by just trying to tweak it a little bit. Well, my curiosity uh, got to me, and I wondered if there were more things like that out there, kind of just kind of ripoffs and things like that. Well, the internet did not let me down. Um, and because my, my daughter learned a valuable lesson that day that uh, everything is a fraud and everyone's out to get you. And so um, we went to the internet. I went to the internet to try to find out some other type of imitations. Well, if you're going out and to look for imitations, you could put on your Mike shoes, right? I figure if your name is Mike and you also like to save money, uh, you, that, that's a good shoe for you. When you go out, you could pick out a Nintendo Poly Station, right? And there are so many things wrong with that. Where's Aaron at, right? Okay. Uh, that makes my head hurt. If you don't like video games, you could go get a new style ninja tortoise. My favorite part about that is that he has tortoise on his chest in case you forget what he is. When you go home, make sure you grab some Sunbucks coffee, right? But before you hit the hay, make sure to clean your teeth with some good old fashioned crust toothpaste. I think that's my favorite, right? Crust toothpaste. I'm not sure that's what you want to put on your teeth, but whatever. You got to save a few bucks here and there. You might have to go with crushed toothpaste, okay? Here's my, here's my point. Here's my point. Sometimes the imitation is not the best thing. <laughs> Sometimes imitation is not the best strategy. And I think we imitate people more than we think that we do. If I listen to a pastor that I like, that I think is, is cool, I notice that I begin to sound like that pastor when I preach. I've noticed that. Now I'm just kind of this um, weird mixture, probably the worst of all worlds, right, of all the preachers that I like. Uh, we're creatures who want to emulate what we desire. Sometimes that works out for the best, right? We mimic what is good, what is valuable, even what is holy, and we're benefited from it. But sometimes it doesn't work that way, does it? We mimic what is ugly, what is bad, what is wrongheaded, what is sinful. And here's a shocker, can I tell you? Not everyone who calls himself a Christian acts like one and is worth imitating. You would think, you would think, I'm just being real with you, you would think that we could look always to older believers and say, well, they've been in the faith for 40 years longer than I have. I'm, I'm going to live like them. I'm going to emulate their way of living. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look to them as a role model for the Christian faith. But some people in the world in general, and in the church even, aren't worth imitating. On occasion, uh, like that is found in 3 John. Last week, we've been in this kind of mini-series called Friend or Foe. And we talked about the church supporting its friends. But there are also some foes of the church. It wasn't always pretty. And the Apostle John is writing to try to take care of this issue. And, and he's going to go there face to face and deal with it. But in the meantime, he writes this letter and he says, Hey, listen, I know you've got a bad egg in there, but I want you to not imitate this guy, but imitate what is good. And our text shows us some examples of what that means. And so I want us to read that together as a church, and then we're going to dive in. So we're in 3 John, which is the shortest book of the Bible. Probably doesn't even take up a page in your Bible unless you really got bad vision. You got the extra, extra size font, which is fine, you know. But we're going to start there in verse 9. So when you found that, if you would stand again just in honor of the reading of God's word, if you're able to do that. If you're not, that's fine. Uh, and then we're going to start in verse 9 and just start reading there. He said, I wrote to the church, but Diotrephes, that's a name that you've got to hone in on today. Diotrephes, who loves to be first. Someone say first. He loves to be first. He won't welcome us. So when I come, that means face to face, I will call attention to what he is doing. Spreading malicious nonsense about us. Not satisfied with that, he even refuses to welcome other believers. He also stops those who want to do so and puts them out of the church. He excommunicates and kicks them out. Dear friends, here's our, here's our verse today. Dear friends, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. Anyone who does what is good is from God. Anyone who does what is evil has not seen God. And then he, he launches into this, right? Demetrius is well spoken of by everyone and even by the truth itself. I wish I knew what that meant, but 
John's original readers did. We also speak well of him, and you know that our testimony is true. I have much to write to you, but I do not want to do so with pen and ink. I hope to see you soon, and we will talk face to face. Peace to you. The friends here send their greetings. Greet the friends there by name. Isn't that nice? But there's an important lesson here. Don't imitate what is evil. Imitate what is good. I want to give some examples from the scripture about that. Let's pray, though. Father, we need your help today. We pray, Lord, that your spirit might be abundantly present. Father, that it might do its work of drawing all people unto Christ. And, and Lord, even in our midst, that the spirit might begin to work to convict sin. And then you might help us to lean in to the message that you have in scripture, even as simple, even as short as it is, Lord, it is packed with your truth. And so we pray, Lord, that, that we might be imitating what is good, what is right, what, what is godly, because that you have made us image bearers of you. We are to reflect your image, not the image of what is ugly and what is wrong in the world. Help us, Lord, to understand and discern the difference. Help us, Lord, to pursue the cross of Jesus and to be more like him today than we were yesterday. Oh, Lord, be with us as we pursue that together. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and take a seat today. Friend or foe, last week our focus was on being a sending church. And in your bulletin today, there is a prayer sheet for the folks that I showed y'all yesterday by way of video. And uh, that's for your benefit to take home and maybe maybe magnetize that to the, to the freezer or something and just pray for those folks. We, we, we gave three kind of being ascending church steps, and one of those was what? It was to pray. It was just to pray. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, it, it, it's very little sacrifice just to pray for those who are being sent overseas. And some of them, they, their whole schedule and their whole way, you know, it, it's one thing that they're uprooting their whole life. But, but for some of them, th that whole process got bungled by COVID and all of the, all of the ways in which to get a passport and to get the vaccines that they need and do all this stuff. It, it's all a mess. And so they're just trying to serve the Lord with everything that they have. And, and they face such great difficulties. So uh, I pray that you would be in prayer for them. But today, I want to look at foes. Because sometimes there are foes. And today I want to put forward this big idea. Christians are to be careful whom they imitate. And our outline is this. Three areas we should be imitating. We're going to do it in the positive but then we're going to look at the negative and their opposites for good measure. Look at, look at verse 9 with me. If you've got your Bible open, there's a guy named Diotrephes. I told you, you've got to, you've got to lean in. I know that's a weird name. It's kind of this Greek name, but we've got to look at Diotrephes. Uh, it doesn't tell us what Diotrephes is, if he's a pastor, if he's a deacon, if, if he's just kind of made up a title for himself and he's just kind of doing whatever he wants. But Diotrephes is kind of a stinker. Uh, I mean, he's kind of a, a, being a bad dude. He's being a headache. For everybody there at the church. And he says, I have written something to the church like previously. And this wasn't second John. This is third John, right? Uh, he, he had written something that we don't know about. But Diotrephes, who likes to put himself first, does not acknowledge our authority. John had written something about being hospitable towards Christian brothers and, and doing the things that we were doing. But, and, and usually they would receive a letter through a courier that the apostle would send and they would read it aloud to the whole congregation whenever that letter would, would come. By the way, that's part of the reason why we read scripture together. We stand and read scripture together today. That goes back to the time of the apostles when, whenever, you know, hey, you've got a new letter fresh from the apostle John. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to have a worship service on Sunday uh, and the pastor's going to come up. He's going to read the letter from the apostle to everybody. Probably not on a stage like this, uh, probably in a different kind of looking building, right? But he's going to stand up and he's just going to read it to everybody in between the, the hymns that we're singing and, and, and the preaching that we're doing, the teaching, the Lord's Supper and all this stuff. He's going to read that scripture. That's why we read scripture together today. But Diotrephes, he didn't recognize that authority. He said, I don't want to read that letter. In fact, I, I might take it and I might just destroy that letter. I, I, might, I, might, I might eliminate that. Now, God has preserved 66 books of the Bible for us to read. And, and these are the, God, the books in God's sovereignty because he's bigger than us. His ways are bigger than our ways. Thoughts bigger than our thoughts. He can do what he will. These are the 66 books he decided for us to have. And he preserved those books. 
but he, in, in God's sovereignty, Diotrephes was allowed to use this sinful choice to destroy maybe a, a letter from John to the church. And he was blocking John from communicating with that church. Here's the key phrase. He likes to put himself first. Somebody say first. first. It's, it's a selfish, self-centered, self-seeking leader in the church. Diotrephes was, was this person who had turned dictatorial. He made himself the authority. He was throwing his weight around, being a bully, being a jerk, <laughs> putting himself first, saying, listen, I don't, I, don't, I don't care what John says. Forget what John says. Forget what Paul says. Forget this. I, you know what? I, I'm just, from now on, I'm just going to talk, and y'all just going to follow me, okay? When I talk, y'all are going to listen. Y'all are going to stand up. Y'all are going to pay attention to me. When I say words, they're going to have weight. You're going to listen and do what I say. But Diotrephes was a cheap imitation of a church leader because that's not what a church leader does. He wasn't worth imitating in anyone's life. That's why John writes, beloved, don't imitate me. Don't be like that guy. You might not be able to remove that guy. You might not be able to to deal with that guy right now. Apostle John was going to come face to face to figure that out. But he said, but don't imitate it. Don't get sucked into that. Did, did you know that there's always going to be personalities in a church? Am I saying something nobody, people don't know, right? There, there's always going to be personalities, right? But that doesn't mean that you got to get sucked into that. And, and you got to start acting like that. And you got you to gotta, uh, get even, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. You know, I'm gonna, I'm, you know what? They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna go low. I'm going to go low. I can go lower. You don't know where I've been before I got saved. <laughs> you don't know the bars that I've been in, right? I, I, can, I, can, I can pull a card from the old life. No, 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 brothers and sisters. Jesus said, turn the other cheek. Turn that cheek. And that's why we imitate, number one, we imitate humility, not pride. Not putting ourselves first. Not demanding that we get what's ours. And believing that we're an authority when we're not. You know, it's not always good to be first. In the world of business, they, they say that there's a first mover advantage, that there's an advantage to being the first one on the market with a new product or a new service. And you can become the industry standard, they said in the 80s. And you can secure brand loyalty and you can tap into consumers first. You can, you can be fresh on the market. But people started to notice that there's a costly downside to being first. The, the old saying goes, many pioneers died with arrows in their back. Sometimes being first is not the best. After all, Nokia and Yahoo were first movers. Google, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok were not. You ever heard of those companies, right? You ever use Google, you know, when you're bored someday, right? There's probably not a day that I don't use Google, right? But they weren't first. (laughs) But, but, and a lot of us, and some of us don't, that's okay. I'm not being elitist or something up here, but a lot of us switch from an iPhone, you know, to an iPhone, from an Android, from the Nokia phone. I, I know people that still use the Nokia phone. Anybody still using the Nokia brick? I mean, it's like he- you can kill somebody with that thing, right? And you, you flip it open, and you can only play Snake. You know what I'm saying? Remember Snake? Okay, and, and doing that, right? But I'm telling you, you could drive a truck over that thing, probably pop a tire. But I ain't going back. I, I'm not going to go back to the Nokia thing. In the kingdom of God, being first isn't best. Did you know that? Did you know that this morning? In the, in the kingdom of, of God, being first is not best. See, Diotrephes, he, he forgot the words of Jesus when Jesus said, the first shall be last, the last shall be first. Diotrephes, he rose the ranks of the church. He, he got people's respect. He, he spoke louder than people, and he threw his weight around, and he showed up, and he got things done. And uh, evidently, he came, but he came to be served, not to serve. And he's the exact opposite of a guy named Gaius that we looked at last week. But even more so, he's the exact opposite of Jesus who said he came to serve and not to be served. He's the opposite of Philippians chapter 2 when it says, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to your own interests. It's not, it's not bad to, to want things, right? It's not bad to, to figure out that you, you figure what's right. That's not what I'm saying. That, that was, that's not a little Jefferson County. <laughs> but he says, don't look only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. If you can't look past the blinders, 
if you can't look past the blinders of your own perspective, of your own desires, of your own needs, man, you're going to put yourself first every time. If you like to put yourself first, I want to ask you, do yourself a favor and do everyone around you a favor and repent of that. Repent of that. Ask God to say, hey, would you give me a personality like yours so that I come to serve, not to be served? That I don't have to put myself first. That I don't have to demand what I want and demand what I need and think that I have some sort of God-like voice. Man, just repent of that. Just put it before God and say, God, I'm sorry because you are king and I'm not. I'm not. Jesus taught us to put others' needs before our own. I want to ask you, do you think you're great? Do you think you're great? You'll never be as great as when you learn to be a servant. You will never be great until you learn to serve people. Jesus, he took, he took his, you know, he wore a suit and tie like me, right? He took his suit coat off. Yeah, some Baptists, that's, that's what Jerry did. And he washed feet, right? What would you do on your last day alive? You got one day. Well, I'm going to ride a motorcycle down, all the way down 44, and I'm going to go to the best clubs, and I'm going to listen to the best live music, and I'm, I don't even care about coronavirus. I'll catch it twice. I'm just going to go out, and I'm going to live it up. Jesus washed feet. He washed feet. Be careful not to imitate every blowhard that throws their weight around everywhere they go. Do this exercise instead. This is what I'm asking you. Do this exercise instead. Think in your mind's eye of a brother or sister that is worth emulating because of their humility. That is worth imitating because of their humility. That acts as a servant. Can, can I tell you? If you're sitting right here in that pew, you're sitting at home watching and you're going, I'm that guy. <laughs> I'm the person. People should be like me. Humble. You probably ain't the guy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Stop it. And maybe think this week how you could follow the Lord by imitating that person's example. Imitate what is good, friends. Look at verse 10. He says, so if I come, if the Lord permits me to come, I will bring up what he's doing. I'm going I'm I'm to make mention of what's going on here. That he's talking wicked nonsense against us. John wasn't going to put up with it. And there's a time to speak up. There's a right and a wrong way to do that. But he was going to speak up. That's even shown in how John writes it. He wasn't going to kick down the doors of the church, but he was going to address it. And, and it falls back on a question in my mind of, of who's your authority? Who is your authority? For Diotrephes, he must come to reckon with, is he his own authority or are the apostles, you know, those guys that spent three years with Jesus? Are they the authority? And that, that's, you say, well, how's that relevant to my life? Because you got 27 books in the Bible that was written by those fellows. And so for us, it's a question of who's your authority? Who's your authority of your life? Are you boss today? Are you the big boss that, that, that makes all the decisions? Or do you submit yourself to the word of God? Who's your authority? What we call the Bible. Many are modern day diatrophies when they reject the scripture. And they become the authority of their own life. Am I preaching today? Are y'all listening? Okay. It gets real quiet sometimes. <laughs> One of this guy's problems was that he was talking wicked nonsense. One translation, it says it was just gossiping maliciously. He was slandering these apostles. He was going to church and he was saying, you know, you, you don't need to listen to John. He was a dirty fisherman. Man, when Jesus found him, he was just a fisherman. He was a nobody. You know, now he thinks he's cool because Jesus spent all this time with him, taught him all this stuff. You don't got to listen to that guy. Paul, man, I don't even know how Paul interacts with this, but Paul... You know, he was a murderer, man. He's got a past. Oh, yeah, you think he's changed? Once a murderer, always a murderer, man. What are you talking about? He was slandering those guys. He was making up accusations against them. We don't know what kind they are. I'm just speculating. But, but we remember Proverbs 18, 7 when it says, A fool's mouth is his ruin, and his lips are a snare for his soul. And, and how many church members today, how many Baptists today, uh, go from here and their lips run <laughs> through lunch. Their lips run. And, and we say all kinds of stuff that, that doesn't need to be said. Because number two, we're to imitate integrity, not gossip. 
We're supposed to imitate integrity, not gossip. I only mention this because this was going on when I was writing this sermon. The Grammys had just had, anybody watch the Grammys? No, you don't. Neither do I. Um, because seriously, who cares? Right? So the Grammys had happened, and I was uh, honoring my annual ritual of not watching it. <laughs> and, and there's this lady named Cardi B, all right? And, and she was doing her thing, and I was blissfully unaware because I wasn't watching, because that's what I do. And there's this lady, this other lady named Candace Owens, and on Twitter, she spoke up about what she thought of Cardi B's little dance thing, I guess. That's what you call it. And uh, calling it out, right? And, and Cardi goes on this Twitter rampage, these Photoshop tweets and these things that are apparently not true, right? I only bring that up. It's all disgusting. It's all silly. It's all stupid. Social media stinks. Delete your Twitter. Live life. You'll be a lot happier, right? But Owen said this, and it just kind of like woke me up. Kind of woke me up. She said, uh, you have one last chance to admit that you're making this stuff up. Or the lawyers are getting involved. And, and in the 21st century, the stuff that you say is taken seriously. The lies that you say, the stuff you make up, people take seriously. But it's always been that serious. It's always been that serious. And so I want to share with you an important principle. The way I prayed this morning, I meant, I want to share with you a principle that I wish I had observed better. And, and maybe it'll prick your heart like it pricks my heart. I, I want to show you, when you, when you want to say something, we, we really need to pass it through three filters. I want to show you number one. Number one, is it true? Right? You, you'd think that would be easy, but you've been on Facebook, I guess. <laughs> don't, don't spread stuff that's not true. If you can't tell it's true, don't say it. Don't say it. Why did you say it? Do your research. Number two, is it kind? I, I, you know, it's one thing to say the right thing. It's another same thing to say the right thing in the right way. You know, if you, if you say something that's absolutely true and hit them with a brick, I, or Nokia phone for that matter, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's still not good, right? Diatribe speech, they said it was wicked nonsense. It was untrue. It was nonsense. It was also just plain evil. It was evil, what he was saying. Number three, this is the one that trips me up. Maybe it trips you up. Is it? This is the one that really hurts me. Because sometimes you might be saying something that's true. Sometimes you might be saying something and, and you're trying to say it kind and you're trying to put a smile on your face and you're trying to, to do this, but, but is it even helpful to have that conversation? Is it even helpful that we're talking about this? You know, the scripture says to let your speech be seasoned with salt for building up. And, and I wonder sometimes, because I say a lot of things that I think are true, and I say a lot of things with a gentle voice, but sometimes I'm saying stuff and it's just like, why am I even talking about this? You know, you know what I'm saying? Right? Why am I even talking about this? Is this building up anybody? Is this helping anything? Sometimes you've got to bring up an issue that's negative. I'm not saying that. But it, is, this, is this a solution? Can I, all right. This, this one hurts me more. But I've got to say it so we can all feel better. If you're talking about a problem without proposing solutions... That's just called whining. <laughs> and, and sometimes I'm talking about a problem, but I'm not trying to figure out what the solution is. And so I'm just playing whining. I, I'm just whining about something, you know? I, I, I don't want to do that. But sometimes we don't even need to have the conversation. I, I'm going to ask you to do something. Do something with me. Think of somebody in your life, a brother, sister in Christ, and imitate this. Imitate the person who's using the filter in their life. These three filters. Is it true? Is it kind? Is it helpful? Is there somebody in your life that you can look to and say, man, that person, I don't think any of us are perfect at it, by the way. But is there a person in your life that you could imitate in there and do what they do? She's ready for church to be done. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, you've, we've had enough. Bye-bye. All right, look at verse 10 again. He says, I, I, I want you to pay attention to this. And not content with that. And not content with, by the way, that's a picture of what sin does. Sin will take you farther than you want to go. It'll take you longer than you want to stay. It'll cost you more than you want to pay. 
not content with that, friends, your sin will never leave you with a feeling of contentment because it's not designed to satisfy the soul. That's not what satisfies. Jesus satisfies. And so we keep running to empty wells, sand-covered wells to try to get water, and we keep becoming unsatisfied with it, discontent, because it will never do that. It's not for that purpose. The sinful personal ambition has a way of growing into a huge power trip. He says he was not content with that. You will never be content with your sin. It'll just keep on growing. I'm something of a board game collector. I don't know if you know that. And we were at a swap meet, and I saw a board game called Pandemic, right? They, they made the board game. Next is going to come the movie, right? And I said, well, I've lived it long enough. Maybe it'll be more fun in board game form, right? And not to brag, uh, but new, it's a $40 game, and I picked it up for 12 bucks. <laughs> but the, the, the game is fun. I'm just not trying to be a nerd here, but the game is fun because you're all really working together against the virus that keeps spreading. You can come to my house. We'll play it, right? It's threatening to overwhelm the whole world, and you know you keep going in the game, and it spreads, and you got to try to to put out the pandemic and and and, and do it all. And we lost, we lost, uh, because we don't know what we're doing. Because it's easy for something bad to grow into a worse thing. I'll say that again, because y'all aren't listening to me. Uh, it's really easy for a bad thing to turn into a worse thing. You look at things in your life and you say, "I don't got to deal with that." Uh, some of y'all could could relate when I hear. Um, a clicking noise in my car, a ticking noise, a rubbing noise, a squealing noise, and I go, ah, it'll go away, right? You know, I just, I just got to run a thousand miles in it, and it'll probably be fine, right? Charlie says no, all right? He's kind of the gearhead, right? Charlie says no, don't do that, because that bad thing is probably going to turn into a worse thing, a, a big problem. And there are things in our life today that we ignore depression and anxieties and, and we say, well, I'll take a vacation someday. I'll put a Band-Aid on it. I'll, I'll deal with it. I'll never deal with the source of the problem. I'm kind of pre I'm preaching myself. All right. But verse 10, he says he focuses, he refuses to welcome the brothers and also stops those who want to puts them out of the church. He's not hospitable and kind to these traveling Christian workers. He wants others to follow his bad example, in fact. If, if anyone crosses him, he excommunicates them. He kicks them out of church. This is a church gone mad, right? Look at how the Bible relates to this guy who, who is just on a trip and, and, and can't get a hold of himself. To be the head of that sort of church requires no cost. To be diatrophies he, there is nobody, no, there's nobody but yes men that he's surrounded himself in. You're in a dangerous position if nobody can stand up to you and say, hey, look, I think what you're doing is wrong. If you've, put your, if you've insulated yourself in a situation where everyone is afraid of you and, and no one is going to look you in the eye and say, hey, I think what you're doing is wrong. I, I think maybe you shouldn't go about it that way. I'm telling you, you are in a dangerous position. You're in a dangerous position that leads to ruin. To hear others, it requires love, patience, sacrifice. So number three, we must imitate sacrifice, not selfishness. Not selfishness. And who embodies sacrifice better than the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself on the cross? He became a sacrifice, laying down his life for you and for me. He said, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. The sacrifice requires that we support one another. But Diotrephes, he's unfit to be a Christian leader because he doesn't model what Jesus modeled. He models everything that we speak against in an effort to promote himself. Be careful in the grace of God. I'm just going to ask you, and if you're sitting here just kind of passively, I'm telling you to lean in today. Be careful that you don't look more like a Diotrephes than Jesus. I mean, if you were to put the two on the stage, which one do you resemble more? I'm just asking you to let the Holy Spirit maybe prick your heart in that way. And I want you to think in your mind's eye of someone that you know personally that models that type of behavior. Sacrifice, not selfishness. Puts others first. This is a person that should be rubbing off on you, not, not the guy that's characterized by selfishness, not the toxically self-centered. And so Diotrephes had to go down to history in two little verses. It's such a bad example. Kind of sad, right? 
But John emphasizes this port, important truth for us. He speaks down the, the channels of time to 2021 to say to us, Beloved church, do not imitate evil, but imitate what is good. Whoever does good is from God. Whoever does evil has not seen God. Sometimes imitation is not the best route. You don't want to end up looking like a Nintendo Poly Station or crust toothpaste. <laughs> That's why I say be careful who you're imitating. But more than any human, imitate Jesus Christ. Imitate Jesus Christ. Look at the ugly things we do to make ourselves feel important. And we would do better to bend the knee to Jesus, to allow him to be Lord, to imitate him. You must have a relationship with him. And I ask today to everyone that's here, everyone who is watching, I ask you, do you really have a relationship so that you are following after Jesus? Not a relationship in the sense that you've written a date and a time and a preacher's name on a Bible and you say, I'm good. Now I get to be king and I get to go to heaven. That's baloney. That isn't faith. That isn't faith. James said, James chapter 2, faith without works is dead. If your faith doesn't produce a change, how can you say that faith's real? How can you say you really know the Lord? How can you say that you're true? If you're not following after him, looking more like him than you did last week, how can you say that you're in him? How can you say that you know Jesus? To believe on his name with all of your heart, to have a relationship with him, to experience new life. Ask yourself, can I just say, are you a friend or foe? Are you a friend or foe of the church and its mission? Are you a friend of Jesus or an enemy of Jesus? But here's the good news, that Jesus came to die for his enemies. He's the only person in history that came and his mission was to die for the people that hated him, to turn enemies, lawless enemies, into friends. So that you can say, I'm a friend of God. And what a friend I have in Jesus. That I can put all my troubles at his feet. And how much sorrow, how much angst, how much needless shame that I bear. All because I do not carry everything to him in prayer. I ask you, are you a friend or foe? Have you made the transition? And so in that regard, I want to stand and pray. And I invite you, maybe in the stillness of your heart, to respond to what the Lord is doing. Respond to how he may just be pricking your heart today. And maybe that takes the form of saying to yourself, in honesty, I have been imitating the wrong stuff. I've been getting the bad results because I've been imitating the wrong stuff. Maybe today it takes the form of you saying, Lord, I repent of my goofball attitude and my wayward thinking and my wayward behavior. And I want to imitate what is good, what is holy, what is right, for what? But maybe today, just in your heart, you're saying, I'm just, the Lord is speaking to me to do something else. To, to partner up to join the big church, to be baptized, to follow after Jesus for the first time. Maybe that you're watching today, you're here today, and, and you're saying, that's me. That's, that's what I need to do. Maybe you make an altar right where you are, and you set up a time with pastor, but maybe that needs to come and to pray at an altar like this, and to say, oh God, would you point me in the right direction now? Would you just point me, orient me in the right direction now? I want to pray, and, and you just ask the Lord how he would Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for your word. And I just pray right now in this place that we would be attentive to your Holy Spirit, sensitive to his leading. And maybe there is someone here today, someone listening today, that is saying, that's, that's me. I, I messed it up. I, I've gone the wrong way. I, I, I've looked at and imitated the wrong stuff. I, I put myself first. I said things I shouldn't have said. Things that were unhelpful, not true, not not kind. I, I've said things I hurt people, and, and I've not. I've lived a life of selfishness because that's what I see working all around me. I see people getting promotions that are selfish. I see people exalted that are promotions that are that are selfish. I see people that are successful and they're selfish. And so, I, man, I wanted that, but now I hear Jesus saying in my heart that the first is going to be last, the last is going to be first, that I will be great in the kingdom, 
And so I put all that away to be a servant and wash feet. And, and so maybe that's somebody here today. Maybe it's time for them to repent right in their heart today. So Father, would you help us to respond? And even as we prepare our hearts and minds for the Lord's Supper today, would you help us, Lord, to respond to your message that you sent? We pray in Jesus' precious name. something that you want to do, maybe the Lord is willing to